Hi, this is Chuck. Welcome to our video question of the week. This week our question is from Robert up in Canada and he asks, we consistently run over the labor estimates. Can you give us one to two items to focus on to correct this? Um, sure, and you know, this is a, certainly a common concern. I guess um, probably one of the biggest things, it's usually, it's usually labor. You know, that's uh, when, when we look at job costing reports from our members, it's always the labor really. Um, people don't forget the materials like we used to. It's just really underestimating certain things that it takes to get a job done, right? So um, the first thing I would say is use our labor installation unit, the labor unit survey. That thing um, has helped correct a lot of problems with that. And it, it shows you where you might be off on how long it takes you to do an, an individual um, item. So you can uh, check with the office here and we'll get you a copy of that for sure. The other thing, um, you know, in, we forget stuff, um, project management time, um, you know, travel time to and from the job site, the meetings that people have to go to, the um, a warranty reserve, a lot of people don't um, add money for that, or the training time it takes, uh, doing design, or if it's a consultant-led project, if you're spending time working with that consultant to figure out the design um, as the job's going on, or modifying that, all those hours have to be accounted for somewhere. And if those weren't in the original bid, that's a lot of times where we, we miss that labor. So um, figuring out where those hours are at and figuring out how to bill for them or how to allocate for them is really important. The second area, the other item I would focus on is really productivity and utilization, is, is making sure that you're tracking how many available hours you have to billable hours. And that's where a lot of our members find themselves out of um, compliance with our benchmark standards again, where, where they're only 50% utilized or 60%. And what you really want to do is get your people up in that 75, 80% uh, range for those uh, revenue generating employees that you got. So um, if you're finding yourself in the habit of, of billing non-billable hours to a job, that might be the problem. So I would get out of the habit of doing that and, and getting an account set up, an internal account for shop time or something that's uh, not directly related to a specific project itself. So that's, that could be where the problem is at, is that you're taking idle time and assigning it to a job just so you have somewhere to put it with your timesheet. So that could be happening in your company as well. I, I see that all the time. So. What I would do uh, first and foremost is focus on those two areas and then I challenge all of our members to, to see if they can find 30 minutes per day of additional billable time per employees. And, and I think if you take a look at their, you know, do they drive to, right to the job site? How much time do they spend in the office before uh, they go out to the job site? Things like that. If you start tracking that productivity, I think you'll find that 30 minutes. And if you do that, by the end of the day, you look at all your revenue generating people, that can be a lot of money and a lot of profit for your company at the end of the day. So, so track that utilization per employee, the, the available time to the billable time, and just uh, start watching that and seeing if you can find you know, where you might be a little bit out of, out of uh, sync with the other members. So thanks for the question.